Hi guys, this is uh, Matt Z from the Optimist Futures uh, Studio. Today podcast will be about becoming a full-time trader. So if you decided to be a full-time trader, there are very specific things that you have to acknowledge and also be aware of. Before I'm going to go into all the major points that I think you should think about before becoming a full-time futures trader is to tell you this. I believe from the bottom of my heart that 99.99% of people should not become full-time traders. And the reason is because I believe that you should always have some sort of an income coming in where you don't rely always on the market. If you decide to go the route of depending only on the market, it becomes a completely different game where there's a change of psychology and the mental game is completely different. And this is what I want to talk to you about. So again, you know, if you don't become a full-time trader, there's nothing wrong with it. There's a lot of people who are Tra good traders and good investors and they also have a steady job so there's nothing wrong with doing both things side by side you choose the hours to trade you choose the hours that you want to focus on and you also have your job and i think this could be a very good combination however if you're one of the lucky ones who decided to move forward and you think you can be successful at this game these are the things that you have to consider if you're going full-time. And full-time, I mean not only being in front of the screen full-time, but also not having any other income but the markets. So, before I start, just a risk disclaimer that there is a substantial risk of loss in futures trading and past performance is not indicative of future results. So when you become a full-time futures trader, or if you want to become a full-time futures trader, one of the things that you have to think about is competition. Who is your competition? It applies to every business out there. It doesn't matter if you open a restaurant, if you open a dry cleaners, um, any type of business, who is the competition? Who are you competing against? Who are the people that are successful in this field who can potentially affect you, right? So if you decided to open a bookstore today or an appliance store, obviously you have creatures like Amazon and they make it very, very difficult to be profitable when most people shop online. It's the same thing in trading. Who is your competition? The competition in the trading business are not only good traders, but there are also quantitative people, like quants, right? There's PhDs, there's uh, statisticians, and all those people work for the best institutions out there. Why? Because they can afford them. And those people write trading models. They can test trading models. They have the time to test them. They have the ability to, um, basically, they have time, right? So the time is on their side. They can test it. They can implement it. If it doesn't work, you know, they have the ability to take the losses as well. They can write them out until they write a new model. So your competitions are extremely smart people and very successful at what they do. The second thing that you have to be aware of is speed and execution. So remember, as retail traders, there's a lot of people out there who are scalpers, right? So somebody wants to be a full-time trader, but also think about scalping. Well, let me tell you what you're competing against over there. You're competing against microwave towers, right? So it's not landlines anymore. Well, it's microwave towers, so they're, they're measured in nanoseconds, not in milliseconds. Retail, we measure in milliseconds. They measure it in nanoseconds. So just remember that those people are able to place their orders ahead of you, and that makes a difference as far as what sort of methodology you choose when you become a full-time trader. The third thing that you have to be aware of is that when you get to the point where you say to yourself, I am going to be a full-time trader. From the time that you transition yourself and break all ties from all your employers, and like I said, not something that I recommend for everyone, if at all. 
you will be on your own. You will sit there in front of the screen. You will have to wait for the opportunities. And then sometimes you, you, the challenge is not only to find opportunities in the market, but also overcoming yourself in case you are bored, in case you just need to put a transaction. You know, you see a lot of flashing opportunities. There's instincts that are uh, working in your mind. And that's a very tough thing to do. The toughest thing to do is actually when you see in the front of the screen is do nothing, right? So waiting for the trigger, waiting for the opportunity to arise, waiting for the right moment. But at the same time, when you sit the whole time, you start seeing things, right? Or things you want to believe in. So the mental game completely changes and you have to be ready for it. And that not only imply, I mean, sorry, the being tough, you know, through um, having the strength, that's what the word I'm looking for, through the mental game. Um, you also not only have to be aware of the market, but it's actually what you do before the market, right? So how do you prepare yourself before the market starts? How do you analyze the results daily? Doing homework every day, just 24 hours, just with the market, right? So this is the point where you become fascinated with the market and treating it like a and treating it like a full-time job. So I always make this distinction between the two people that are fascinated with the markets and they know everything, by the way, right? I mean, they know when the S&P opens, when it closes, the leverage, you know, what every broker offers, all the data feeds and everything else, but they're not traders yet, right? I mean, they just know about a lot about trading, but they're not traders. And when you go full time, you have to be a trader. And part of being a trader is not only being successful. I don't mean to imply that only successful people are traders because there are people who will lose money in the first few years and potentially could become better later. So I don't want to diminish their role and, you know, as being traders. But at the same time, to be a real full-time trader is not only trading in the markets. Like I said, it's analyzing the markets before the market starts, after the market starts, going through very painful periods where you're not successful right and analyzing those periods and still doing the same thing over and over and over again despite the fact that the market does not cooperate you know i probably need to make a podcast in itself about the idea of applying things right but they're not kicking yet so for example if you become disciplined you know, in trading, and then you're like, oh my God, I'm disciplined. I read all the discipline books. I'm doing everything right. Why am I still not making money? So there's always that period of, you know, that you don't feel the, the impact of your, you know, of, of, of everything you're putting in. Like, so it's, it's difficult during that time. And that's what I mean about the mental game. You know, you're trading and the results are not there. And that's very frustrating. And only people who have traded for a very, very long time are able to understand that this could be temporary and they continue to do the same thing over and over again. Beginner traders, it could be a little bit difficult. And, and again, like I said, when you're uh, full time, the mental game will play a very big role in your success. The fourth thing that you have to remember is that you have expenses, right? So if you have a certain capital that you're working with, <clears throat> excuse me, and you have to withdraw money out of the account, this is something that will affect your bottom line. So if you have X amount of dollars and then you have Y expenses, if you have to keep on taking it out of the account all the time, it obviously shrinks the account. So you must have money which is outside of your trading capital. You can't have all your trading capital there because then it's not risk capital anymore, right? So even if you're a full-time trader, you have to have money for expenses, right? You got to have money for your rent or your mortgage or your electricity and your food and everything else. And you got to set that aside for at least a year, at least, you know, if not more. Again, I'm just being, I'm trying to be positive about the whole thing and still staying realistic. But at the same time, obviously you understand that if you have all your capital in your trading account and you have nothing on the side, it, it makes it even harder psychologically and financially, of course, to keep on trading. So again, you have to separate the two. Okay, enough on that. 
The next point is that it's very important is to, to really judge yourself. So how do you judge yourself, right? How do you become objective? That's what it means when you judge yourself, right? Like you judge your motivations, right? So what is your motivation to trade? If your motivation to trade because you hate your boss and you're dreaming of independence, let me tell you this, trading does not buy you independence at all. If anything, it's exactly the opposite of independence because independence means that you're not accountable, right? So a boss will not come and tell you when to work, how many hours to work, what to do, when to leave, you know, what sort of bonus you deserve, what you don't deserve. Everybody wants to write their own checks. However, then they face the reality of being their own boss. And in trading, when you become your own boss, it's one of the most difficult professions out there. So now nobody writes you a check. That's true that you won't have a boss that will tell you what to do. But at the same time, if your motivation from the first place was just because of those things, you're not going to be a successful trader. Again, it's going back to my third point, which was the mental game. And you have to be able to measure yourself every day. The burden of becoming a full-time trader is actually more difficult than working for somebody because every day you have to have an evaluation. So you know how your boss will come to you every quarter, every year, every six months and will say, let's go talk about your progress, right? As a trader, you have to do it daily. You have to think about your progress daily. Now, obviously, there's bigger periods. As quarters, you can look at bigger numbers of what you've done. And I don't mean you have to be difficult on yourself, but every day you got to have an analysis of what you did and you're going to place it in Excel spreadsheet, some sort of a software that would allow you to see exactly what you've done every day, the risks that you took, the not frequency of trades, the, um, the trades that you have done. And all those numbers, what you want to do is not analyze them when you trade. You want to analyze them after the market, when you close your screen or on the weekend, and do that. So again, motivation plays a very big role in all of this and understand what you're getting into. The last thing that I would mention is your experience, right? So before you decide to go full time, think about your experience. I think you need a minimum. This is again, just my opinion. For some people, it might be less. For some people, it might be more. But I think you need a minimum of five years of trading experience. And what I mean by five years of trading experience is not just trading once a week and then dropping it for three months and then coming back. And then you say, I traded for, you know, five years means five years that you actually been active for five years. You, maybe there's some weeks you can trade and maybe there's a few months, but overall, for the most part, you were active. And the reason is, is because the reason for that is because now you actually have data that you can work with and say, okay, this is what, how I perform when I trade. Now I'm going to think about all the other things, such as the mental game of motivation. Uh, I'm going to think about my competition, speed and execution, everything else. And then you can say, can I take my experience from the five years that I have and can I replicate it? If you weren't that successful during the five years, you know, going full time is probably not a good idea because obviously, you know, just because you're sitting there and you're focused only on the markets, it doesn't mean that you will have the discipline, you know, to become better at it. Now, for some, maybe, but I don't, but overall, I don't think so. So I think you have to be somehow successful during those five years. And again, you know, I did podcasts before about the 10,000 hours and, you know, whether it's true or not. And sometimes it depends on your experience and what you do with it. But overall, five years would give you some sort of an idea of where you stand. The first year is difficult. The second year is challenging. By the end of the third year, you kind of start getting the idea of things that are happening. And, and after that, you need another two years of solid trading to really um, understand um, and go through uh, certain things where you start revising your, your, your plan when things don't go well or understand what are drawdowns. And above all, during the five years, I think, you know, you could potentially encounter a lot of market cycles. You can 
encountered the HFTs, a few market meltdowns, a few markets that are going through, you know, through uh, serious highs, through serious lows. So this is something that you want to experience. You want to experience all the trading environments and this experience will basically give you also an idea when you're going full time to anticipate that something like that may happen in the future. So you decide, for example, not to over leverage your account just for the one time that one off that potentially the market is just melting and you don't want to lose your capital because you have too many positions. So you don't think after five years, you don't think about the next opportunity in the market. You start thinking, what do I do consistently? What do I do over and over and over again in order to achieve positive results? You're not thinking sporadically how to in one week, you know, try to make your losses back or how to um, over leverage just this one time as traders say just this one time just if the opportunity arrives and i won't and i won't repeat it all the time full-time traders don't do those kind of things they don't do the mini experiments in between of breaking all the rules and of trading breaking rules of and of risk management over leveraging they have a certain plan they stick to it and basically as boring as it as it may be it actually what might potentially could lead to successful uh, trading career. Uh, that's it for now, guys. I hope that this would help you tremendously. And uh, I also hope that uh, you can, if you listen to this on YouTube, you can give us the, the like button. Would love to hear your thoughts on um, the matter and um, basically see if you're inspired to go full-time one day and what are your challenges in day-to-day -day trading what if there are other challenges that other people should think about when they become full-time and if you did become full-time would love to hear your story please share it with us um, either in the comments below or just drop me an email would love to hear your story if you guys want to ask us questions about trading platforms about um, technology execution anything like that go to community.optimistfutures.com if you want to have a future trading account i would love to earn your, your business go to optimistfutures.com or just call us here in north america it's 1-800-771-6748 local you can call us locally as well uh, from anywhere 561-367-8686 that's it for now and until next time i wish you all the best in trading take care Bye bye